Hello. How are you doing, Jamie? All right, mate, what's the crack? Yeah, I hear that you're heading out to Japan, so I thought in advance we might get a little Japanese culture to get you in the mood. All right, yeah, that sounds good. Sounds like a good plan. Send me a pin drop there and I'll come and pick you up. All right, nice one. Do it now. Talk to you soon. All right, Chief. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, good, good. How's things? Ah, not little, too bad. Little road trip? Yeah, why not? Why not? Well, I, I've never been to Japan, so I, I, I feel as though we need a little taster for what it might have to offer here in Ireland. You've been to Japan though, right? Yeah. It's, it's so different yet so similar in so many different ways. It's a real blend of a really old traditional country, but at the same time in the cities, there's so much modern ageism that it's, it's this like weird juxtaposition. So what, what's, your, what's your first World Cup memory? I think probably Gordon Hamilton scoring the try against Australia in the quarterfinals that almost got us to our first semi-final. I remember jumping around the tiny little 14-inch TV at home <laughs> and everyone's crowding around and, um, and thinking, oh, a World Cup semi-final. And everyone, you know, piling onto the pitch and slapping back. So yeah. It was nuts. Just, yeah, it seems yeah, like yeah, an eternity yeah. ago. When I think of the World Cup, I actually... I think of watching um, Australia versus England. In 2003? What year were you born? 83. Okay. But, uh, see, I was living abroad. Okay, fine. So we, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll give you a pass on that. <laughs> okay. And I just remember watching that final and seeing, because for me, you always, I always thought like an Australia or New Zealand or South Africa, that, that kind of wins. Mm. And to see, to see that script being changed mm. was kind of, was it, like, in a, in a weird way, quite inspiring um, for me as a, as a kind of a younger player trying to break through at the time. I remember getting my first World Cup try, but we were playing against USA, and there was a guy called Grobelar who was playing in the centre. I've never heard of him before or since, since. but I remember thinking, I, I'm out of my depth here. <laughs> like, this guy has a full head of facial hair. <laughs> I, like... Well, he guys always see so much older then, don't they? He is a proper, proper man. How am, how am I meant to compete Painting against this guy? And I got my first try um, in that game. And, um, Jesus. yeah, I remember thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I can actually handle it against the big it. boys. Yeah, yeah, you can handle this. Do you have a favourite Rugby World Cup? Yeah, 03. It was just a fun trip. Um, we were probably still coming to terms with what professionalism was. <laughs> um, but, the but we managed to get the balance right there. We had really good fun. Um, and then we got to a, a quarterfinal. You know, it was such a relief just getting to the knockout stage yeah. and having capitulated the, the previous World Cup. How important is it that a Rugby World Cup is part Oh, your CV. Like for me, it was definitely a big goal of mine. So when I did make it in 2011, it actually felt all that bit more special for me. And good memories from from that World Cup in New Zealand yeah, in 2011. Yeah. We had, I, I we was had actually going to ask a really you. Really good bond. We, we had a good crew. Team. It was a great laugh. Japan is going to be so different, but you're still going to see those pockets of green, no matter what, mm. just popping up everywhere. Um, and what a better like? Is there a better place than going to Japan for the tournament to experience this? you know, on, on a brand new level in front of, you know, how exciting it is to, to go to a new market and show them what the values of the game are about. You know, show them on scale that like, the smallest person on the field, if it's the referee, for example, holds the most power on the field. And mm -hmm. like, you don't, you don't say boo diddly to him, but um, that's ingrained from, from the grassroots all the way through up. And I, I love that tradition. So Ireland play Japan on the 28th of September. Should they be worried? With the Irish hat back on me now, I would definitely be scared. Mm. Does, does, in that case, does home advantage count for much? To a certain degree, yes. I mean, particularly, particularly for Japan, you know, they're, they're going to have at least, what, 60, 70% of the crowd potentially. Now, the Irish people always travel. We always get amazing turnouts. You know, when you have that majority crowd, you know, when you need that energy booster, you know, you, you, the crowd give it to you and they give it to you in spadefuls. People are always interested in who's going to be the bolter for this yeah. World Cup. For me, it's Manu Tuolangi. Yeah. Um, I thought he was just a, a, a big, you know, smash merchant. But I was blown away with the skills mm. and the football and ability that he mm. actually has and the brain that he has mm. around the way to play the game. And to see him and to see the glimpses that, that he has showed um, in the last couple of games 
excites me to mm. see what he's going to do in the World Cup. I think this is going to be a stage that is that's set for him to, to really come out the gates hard. If you have a um, sportsman's bet um, on uh, who's going to win the, the Rugby World Cup. If Ireland don't win it, I, I didn't ask you if Ireland don't win. I, I, listen, we're talking about not okay. heart, but okay. head. South Africa. Wanna, South Africa to win, okay. They have, they have a blend of a really good power game through their pack that can give a really good platform to a very dangerous fast back line that know how to execute. And second to that, I think what Razzie's done in building out, we talk about building depth of squad, building out that squad, that they can have two different teams effectively. Mm. That hasn't, hap that hasn't mm. been there for South Africa for a long time. Who are you, who are you saying? I'm going to go with England. I just think that I feel as though what they have shown over the course of the last um, seven or eight months and how they're building even this summer, I just have been incredibly impressed with their ability to mix their game up, their ability to play with, with you know, sleight of hand, particularly amongst their tight five and their forwards. I just think that's a new dimension brought to their games. And I just yeah. fancy that they've got the firepower. They'll need a little bit of luck, but they've got the firepower to get this yeah. done.